Hi, I'm Tim with the Shab Real Estate Team, and we are on Behind the Sign with an amazing guest, someone I followed since about 2019, blew my socks off, Ricky Carruth. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What's up, bro? Good to be here. Uh, yeah, no, nah, man, I've been, uh, I'm 41, be 42 this year in 2023. 2023 is going to be one amazing year, by the way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I'm just down here on the Alabama Gulf Coast, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, right on the Florida line. Been selling real estate since 2002. And uh, it's been a roller coaster, <laughs> honestly, but it's been fun. Um, it's a wild and crazy career, but um, it's one I think uh, anybody can succeed at. And I think everyone, you know, honestly should should do real estate. <laughs> you yeah. know, if I had my way, everybody would be a real estate agent. And then everybody says, well, then who was going to buy all this real estate? Who's yeah, going, that's, bra who's going to that's a brave estate? statement, man. Everybody should be a realtor, right? That's brave. Everybody should be a real estate agent. Absolutely, man. Make an experience. Where are we going right? to where are we going to get the business from? That's what somebody asked me one time. I said, well, listen, I get a lot of business from agents, <laughs> a lot of business. <laughs> You know, when you got to go, when you buy something in a different area, um, like when I buy in different areas, I use a real estate agent. I'm yep. a real estate agent, right? Why wouldn't um, you? Because you don't know the local market. You yep. know, the 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 markets are so different from market to market and different paperwork, different, um, you know, fees, different, um, you know, things with the counties and the cities and the states. It's, it's um, that's what I say, man. It, it's such a wild and crazy, uh, crazy deal. So, so if me as an agent needs an agent when I go places, how do you think normal people feel that aren't real estate agents, even right. when they're in their local market? Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. I definitely agree with you, hundred percent. Even like on the commercial side of stuff, I don't do commercial real estate, so I'm not going to try and act like I do. I refer it because, and if I were to go get something, I would use a commercial realtor because they know what they're talking about, right? Like. Yeah, it is what it is. So, Ricky, yeah. I, I started following you. I think we went back and forth in 2019. And I'll, you know, I'll be honest with you, man. I was like, this guy is full of crap. How can he possibly do all of that? And mm -hmm. I, I've been watching your videos lately, and I know you take a lot of heat there because the amount of stuff that you put out there, the number of videos, and I can say that you absolutely do because you haven't stopped. Like it just continues year after year. You put out probably more videos than any real estate agent. Um, and I know you do the real estate coaching too, but just the amount of stuff you put out is amazing. How do you keep up with that? Yeah. I mean, from the social media uh, side of things, it's uh it's always a work in progress. You know, um, people look at, they take a snapshot of what I do day to day now. And they think, man, there's, you know, how in the world, there's no way I could do that, this, that, and the other. But what they don't get is, is I've been doing this for 20 years. You know, mm -hmm. I focused on real estate sales for 15 years, totally 100% focused, didn't do anything else whatsoever. Um, dabbled in some real estate investing, but I didn't do stocks. I didn't do social media, nothing. Just focused on phone calls, emails, and postcards to get my business to where I was making a million dollars a year. Then once I made a million dollars a year, then I said, okay, let's, let's dabble into other things. I conquered that. And then I started um, writing books. I started writing and speaking and making videos and coaching and stuff like that. But it's it's been like a you have to layer it, right? Um, you know, I did Facebook first. You know, I worked on it and really tried to understand it for like three or four months before I even touched another platform. Then I went to yep. Instagram and, and, and added that to the the layer of it facebook right and worked on it for three or four months then i added youtube started working on it then i did you know different platforms and added podcasts and did all that so it's it's been a like a, a layered stair-stepping process and along the way you kind of start to learn what works and what doesn't work how to be more efficient how to produce content at scale um and everything like that so now bringing that all to present day um like for um my vertical um format you know videos for yep. you know uh, reels and TikTok and yep. youtube shorts and stuff like that you know i'll sit down and actually i'll sit down for like an hour and come up with all the ideas for like 20 videos um you know these videos are one minute long or so mm -hmm. give or take and i'll come up with like 20 ideas and i'll literally film all of them in one setting you know back to back to back Yep. Um, so I just batch them up like that. And then I have an editorial team that takes them and makes them look amazing. 
and then boom, you know? So uh, honestly, I'm right now I'm up to posting five times a day on Instagram. Um, I'll mix a Twitter post in there, a quote or an image. Um, you know, I'm starting to do the article in the background, giving yep. reactions to headlines yep, like and stuff, that. which is, which is really cool. And, uh, that's brought a lot of views to my, to, and a lot of followers to my uh, profile. But honestly, tomorrow it'll be something else. Like I'll, yep. I'll see something or hear something or, 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 or realize or research about something that changes my strategy up a little bit. And you're just constantly getting a little better, a little better, a little better. But you hit it on the head, man, that it's just consistency. Yeah. So 2019, did you have an editorial staff at that time? Or did you do editing, editing everything? At that That's time. what I thought, man. Yeah, That's I why was... I was like, there's no way, because I know this guy's probably doing his own stuff. He's making yeah. you know this many calls. You know, you preach. Like, you know what's like, so cool about it was that when I got to where I was making a mill a year, um, that was when I quit prospecting and I was just living off past clients and referrals. Yeah. And when you live off your database, you maintain your level of income. So when I worked so hard to get to the mill, then I could actually turn off the prospecting you know, time and focus more on content creation and building other businesses, but still maintain that million a year. Really, I was working like maybe five to 10 at the most hours a week on my real estate business, um, um, you know, while I was maintaining that 100 deals a year because yeah. it's only two deals a week. Right. It's two deals a week. And um, it was I was just taking orders. It wasn't like I was having to you know, work really hard or prospect for these deals. It was just people coming to me saying, I want to do this, I want to do yeah. that. And then my assistant was really handling everything on the back end. Mm -hmm. So I was just handling the, the first phone call, maybe a negotiation here or there, a repair addendum, maybe go to a closing or two. I wasn't spending a whole lot of time, but the thing is, is I spent 15 years to build that machine. Yep. And that's what people just, they just can't, you know, they're like, oh, there's no way he's doing all this and all that. Well, I spent 15 years to build that machine to the point where I could afford to to play it like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, you know what? So the other day, and I didn't realize this back then, but the other day I heard you saying how, you know, you went broke, you worked in the oil fields, you did all this stuff. And I've been in the business since 04. Uh, you're probably 02, 03, right? Somewhere back there. So our career path is extremely similar. And I think the way we approached our business was very similar too. And like, when I heard you say that you went broke, you worked multiple jobs, that's the kind of thing that those people don't realize. The people who think, mm -hmm. well, you know, how does this work? How does this happen? And they're two years in the business. They don't understand the, the grind. They don't understand that you know, we've been through the lows and we know that the minute you take your foot off the gas, you come to a stop. And, you know, my wife has mentioned to me, like, when is, when is enough enough? You know, when is enough enough? I'm like, it never is enough yeah. because I'm scared yeah. to death to take my foot off the gas. Cause if I do that, yeah, this animal is going to come to a screeching halt. And I'm scared to death of that because I've been through it and it's horrible. So crazy yeah. that so similar. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the same thing sometimes when's enough enough, because I don't honestly, I don't have to work anymore, but I still get up like I'm broke every day. Um, I don't know. I grew up roofing houses and, um, you know, I, I don't care what's happening, like in my financial situation or the markets or whatever. Um, you know, my lifestyle is I get up and work as hard as I can every day, um, you know, no matter what's happening. It's not really about money. It's not really about markets or whatever. It's just about working. I don't about know. Doing it. Uh, I just, yep. I just love to work. It's honestly, it's almost like a hobby. Yep. Um, you know, there, just, there's a part of, there's a part of it where I just really enjoy it to the point where it's almost, you know, it's not a hobby <laughs> because I do it every day, all day long, but yeah. there's definitely a sense of enjoyment behind it, but you're right. Um, you know, once you let that, that foot off the gas, listen, you know, people talk about going from part time to full time, what's going to change in your life. You wake up now to go to your full time job, you know, you wake up and you work your ass off all day, yeah. right? When you, when you go real estate full time, it's going to be even worse. You're yep. going to wake up and work your ass off all day and night, yep. you know, 
Yeah. Um, I was just talking to a, doesn't really change that much. I was just talking to a friend and we had this exact conversation. He was like, you know, if I didn't have a wife and a family, I would work 20 hours a week. And I'm like, I feel you, man. Cause that's, that's what we do. That's just like something it's ingrained in it. And, and I do believe that you either have that mentality or you don't. Because what does he, what does he mean now? If he didn't have a wife and kids, if he, he didn't have family, house. he'd work 20 hours a week, which is less than he works now. No, I'm sorry. 20 hours a day. My bad. 20, oh, hours, 20 a hours a day. Yeah. Okay. Misspoke. And I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. 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 So if he didn't have a family, he would work 20 hours a day. Yeah. I mean, I think about that too. Um, mm -hmm. I think I would definitely work more if I didn't have a family for yeah. sure. Uh, um, so, and that's a good thing <laughs> that I have right. a family and I do, and I do take off at five o'clock and I do take off on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, could I produce more and, and, you know, be even more superhuman? Sure. But I think that's my enough is enough. You know, your wife says one's enough enough. Yeah. I think my enough enough is enough is at five o'clock every day. Right. Like that's where I cut it off. Like, could I work past five and double my production and produce more content and do more things and all this stuff? And yes, I could. Um, that opportunity sitting there, but enough is enough. Five yeah. o'clock, I'm gonna clock out, I'm gonna you know, do you still what make I yourself available doing. though. Are you still available to your current clients at, after five? It just depends on what the situation is. Yeah. Like if they want to see a house, if they want to, you know, list a property, um, if we're negotiating a deal, if I need to, if they want me to write an offer, yeah, I'll do any of that stuff. Yeah. I'm not going to answer repair addendums. I'm not going <laughs> to yeah, answer right, right. it. I'm not going to answer an email from a random buyer lead. I'm not yeah. going to, you know, I'm not going to do the tedious office work type stuff, but yeah, if there's a situation, sure. Right. But that's, that's the thing. A lot of people talk about that and come to find out those situations are not very common. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they do happen here and there, and there are markets where most buyers are looking after five o'clock because they work all day. Yeah. I get all that. Um, but if that's your life, um, you know, I've always said, I'm going to work from eight to five and after five, if you want to see property, I'm there, right. Or on the weekends, I never worked in the office on the weekends and stuff. Right. Um, I always went to appointments on the weekends. Um, but I never like did the, the day-to-day -day admin research and development, stuff like that. Postcards, yeah. letters, emails, marketing. Can all wait. Yeah. And yeah. you have, you have, so when was it you hired somebody? to your admin, your back end. So when I was, it was probably 2012 ish or so. I got back in in 2008 mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, I was just single agent till about 2000. I want to say 2011 or 12 or so. And I had 30 active listings and that was kind of the breaking point for me yeah. because I was getting so many requests to see my listings. Um, that I could hand like me handling the requests to see my listings because I'm in a vacation market. So like when they request, then I have to call the rental company to see if the current oh, renters that are there so for a week yeah. will let us see. Yeah. Then call, then wait on yeah. them to call the renters, then have them call me back. Then I call the agent and all that's done digitally now, of course, but it's still a process. I still have right. to email, yep. wait and response, see if the renters are okay with it get the code like it's a process and so i was spending all my time handling requests so that was the first task i had to take off my shoulders to give myself enough room to breathe mm -hmm. so i could go out and you know prospect more and sell more real estate um so once i brought my admin on to take that one task off my shoulders to where i could open up to continue expanding my business then i just taught her everything else you know how to put stuff in mls how to do postcards how to do all the other things that you know i needed her to do so yeah i think that's the thing is you get to the bottleneck in your business and you realize what those one or two activities are that are really holding you back from growth mm -hmm. and those are the two activities you hire someone for and then once you get them on board and train them on those two things and you can you got some room to breathe then you kind of show them all the other stuff to really take everything off your plate yeah so you you go for doing 100 deals a year for a number of years in a row to saying 
hmm, I think I want to coach and do that for free. What what was yeah. that trigger? So what got you to do that? The thing what well, the thing was there was two things. One, I watched a guy die who um who literally made calls. He was calling expires for sale by owners till three days before he died. He died of natural causes and um, you know, he knew he was gonna die. And he made calls till three days before he died. And those last few days, he couldn't make it to the office. He was too sick. And so, but he wanted to make those calls all the way as long as he could to leave his wife with as much money as he possibly could. Wow. So watching that happen to that guy who was real, he was really a mentor to me. Um, watching that happen to him back in 2012 or 13, whenever that happened, it really opened my my, my eyes up to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not want to be that guy that is, calling for sale by owners three days before I die. And then when I got to the point where I was making a meal a year and I was kind of doing it really passively because it was just all past clients and referrals and I had extra time on my hands. Um, I said, okay, here's my opportunity to see what else I can do with my life and try to branch into other things and kind of try to diversify because I knew I didn't want to sell real estate forever at that point. There was definitely a time in my life where I wanted to sell real estate till I died. I just loved it that much. Yeah. And I think a lot of agents sit there and and I've heard a lot of agents say that. And I tell them, I'm like, that's what you're saying now. Right. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, grind. Yeah. Is you're going to get to a point. Yeah. You're going to get to a point where the grind is going to be too much for you. Mm -hmm. And you're you're going to you're going to want you're going to have wished you put something in place that could kind of supplement that where you could do it if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, real estate investing is a big, big, you know, vehicle, yeah. you know, that all agents need to be doing is investing into the product that you're selling, understanding the game of real estate investing and depreciation and um, all that stuff. And then, um, but, you know, I, I, you know, I did that of course, but, you know, I saw a huge opportunity with social media that I didn't take advantage of in my real estate business, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, I, I kind of, I was in, a, I, you know, I was one of the first people on MySpace and <laughs> MySpace went away really fast. Yeah. It did. You know, yep. basically as soon as Facebook came along, well, when, when Facebook came along, I was like, well, this is just another MySpace. It's going to go away quick. And so at that point, when what happened to MySpace, it kind of spoiled it it worked me for social media. And so I just didn't pay attention to any social media platform for like a decade. Cause that was like in 2005, 2004 right. or five yep. or whatever. And so literally for a decade, I completely ignored all social platforms. And by the time I could pick my head up for air from just keeping my head down and focused on sales, as soon as I could, look around and breathe for a second and, and really started to try to understand what's going on. I realized, wow, these platforms are here to stay. And this is an incredible opportunity. You know, I missed the boat building my real estate business there. However, I can still build a brand there and awesome. see what I can do to, you know, build other businesses later on. So the, the effort and the grind that you put into it, made it a lot easier for you to do because your Insta is insane. I, I noticed your Insta is massively different and your YouTube is massively, massively different than your Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so it's a crazy free part just to finish the story, the free part. Right. Um, Cause that, that was the weirdest part of the whole thing. Um, when I started, when I wrote the two books, right? Well, I was writing a book. Cause I said, man, I've, I've hit a hundred deals for three years in a row. Most people sell real estate for two years and sell 19 properties. And now they coach and, you know, sell yeah. courses for 500 bucks. Yeah. So my story is I got in, I made a meal, I lost it. I came back, I became the top agent in Alabama and sold prop, sold a hundred properties a year for three years and then decided I'm going to try to share some of this with people. Yeah. So I was writing a book in the middle of writing the book. And Remax said, we want you to speak of this thing. And I was like, oh, I'll do that. Hell you yeah. know? Um, yep. So I go and do this first speech in Biloxi back in 2016. Um, and long story short, um, you know, it was a disaster, really. I was kind of sick. I was in a suit. I was the last speaker. I was nervous as can be. Um, but I made such an impact on the people. People were standing in the line to talk to me afterwards. And I was like, wow, 
the, what I'm saying really resonates with people. Yeah. I need to finish the book. So that motivated me to finish the book. Well, then I started saying, okay, I'm going to do a coaching program. So I was charging, overcharging 20 bucks a month, 150. I tried a thousand one time fee. I tried all kinds of different things. And at the end of the day, to make a long story short, I realized agents just don't want to pay anything for anything. You know, yeah. so oh, yeah. I said, you know what? Uh, 300 people will sign up for a webinar. 100 will show up and three will sign up. I was like, man, nobody here that 300 people wanted help. 100 really wanted some help. And only three get to hear what I'm really saying behind the scenes. I was right. like, everyone needs to hear this stuff. So I was like, man, if I just open up my entire mind to the entire world for free and let everybody in, then I can create a big enough brand to where I can at that point go build other businesses on top of that brand, as opposed to trying to build a business on a coaching program, I could actually open up to the entire world and then build even bigger businesses than the coaching program long-term. Right. So that's kind of been the play. And what really made me do it is I was just frustrated with trying to build, because I was making 10 G's a month, automatic payments on 200 agents at the time. But I was like, this is just not where it's at. Um, and so I was already posting on all platforms and I was already like building brand and stuff. But the pay thing was a thorn because like I couldn't go on stage and tell people everything that I wanted to tell them because then I'm telling people the secrets that other people are paying for. Right. Yep. Like the whole thing was not me. It just I couldn't. It didn't feel right. The whole yep. thing. So Gary V, I ran into his content and um, it kind of hit me. I was like, I need to go free and just build my brand and then opportunities will happen. And yep. so, so that's what's happened, dude. That's now awesome. I've got celebrities following me and DMing yep. me and all kinds of big names and and stuff. And it's really cool. It's kind of so fun. I'm getting all kinds of opportunities and, you know, we're launching all kinds of different businesses right now and mm -hmm. very exciting, honestly. Yeah, I listened to it. I I was a big Gary Vee guy back in 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I mean, it, it, the stuff he would say was always, I already had that in my mind at one point or another. So it always resonated with me. And, you know, honestly, yeah. I think back and that was, that's what drove me. You know, I've, I've always had the similar, like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to be the best at what I do. It's not about making the money. It's about making the biggest impact that I possibly can. And Gary V gave me that, like if there was a time where I was driving to work and I just kind of felt like blah, I'd have to listen to Gary V or, you know, somebody. And next thing you know, I'm back on track, ready to get in there and I'm on fire. Right. <laughs> I said Grant, to Brooks, Grant Cardone also was a big influence uh on me the 10x rule and stuff yeah um you know i mean i've kind of it's been a love-hate relationship <laughs> with me and him but at the end of the day i really like him you know yeah. uh, i don't agree with every little thing but but yeah the, those two were kind of my and so now when you think about those two i talk to gary you know like we talk but um like uh a lot of people think, oh, well, it would be great if I were like in really good with the Garrett, Grant Cardones, the Gary Vees, the Ed Milettes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And what's cool about what I'm doing is I can visualize five, 10 years from now. And I and I see all the future Gary Vees, yep. the future Ed Milettes and Grant Cardones. Yep. And I'm literally creating great relationships with these future influencers, uh, the next generation of these guys. And it's really cool to kind of take a second sometimes to look at what the future holds right um for what i'm doing it's really it's a really cool thing um you know to think about but yeah um you know there's some big time future influencers that we're like best friends you know talk all the time that's awesome yeah i you know I I've always wanted to get there and I've always, you know, I've got quite a few videos and I, I'm thinking to myself, I got 370, 380 videos on YouTube. And then I look at you and you're like 1.3 thousand videos. I'm like, sheesh, I got a ways to go to catch up to this guy. Those but, were like um, videos I was putting out every day. I was just, I was in this mode where I want to put out, I want to put out a video every single day on yeah. every platform, you know? Um, but and what I've learned recently, they weren't just What's videos. That? They weren't just videos. I mean, they weren't just filling space. They all had good content. 
I think so too. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, totally. Um, no, what I've learned lately is that quantity really, really quality quantity on Instagram is what's crushing it. Like what I'm yep. doing five posts a day, trying to keep the quality as high as possible yep. for five posts on YouTube. It's more quality. Like you right. could do one video a month. And as long as it's a really incredible Dynamite. video that everybody loves, then you're going to crush it. You know, you could do one video a month and crush it on YouTube as long as it's very well produced and high yep. quality, you know? So absolutely um i'm learning you know now 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 with that being said with youtube um i film and edit all my youtube still right and that's why i'm putting out less content there right this second i'm putting out more shorts than anything because right. i'm kind of spending time to create my long form co content yeah because i really want it to be good and in 2023 i really want to ramp up youtube and um see some see some better growth than i have Right. And I, I, that's why I hired a full-time cinematographer, um, videographer and back in 2020, I think maybe 21. Now it's been three years, easy three years. And it does take time to edit, you know, I'll do a video and I'm like, bro, I I'm already on to the next one. I need this video. I'm over it now. Like I need this now. And to mm -hmm. get a professional good video, it takes five or six days for them to go through everything, get all the clips and make them as good as they possibly can be so i i hear you i couldn't even imagine trying to do it myself there's times i'm like i'm gonna learn how to do this i'm gonna learn how to do this and you know i i'm a one-man show i've got a team below me my business alone i'm hoping to sell 100 houses a year i'm usually between 90 and 110 so i don't understand how you say i'm doing 100 and i got some free time <laughs> i'm like what but it's I the way that, that I built my business. Out. It's the way that I built it. You know, I built it on not following up with people, right? Letting them come to me. Yep. Uh, I built it through really spending time to create a really incredible original email every week. Um, you know, and and I just let them come to me. So when they when they and I give them as much as I can on the weekly email. So about the, by the time they come to me, they are they're ready to buy or they're Dude, ready they're to ready. sell. Yep. By the time they actually get to me they're ready to go. And there's not a whole lot of uh, back and forth. I think Absolutely. another part of it that plays in a little bit is that I'm in, I'm selling mostly Gulffront condos and all my clients are out of state. Gotcha. And I think that also has a lot to do with um, my efficiency versus like a primary home market agent, right. you know, who's basically, you know, they're, they're looking at their client every day. Yep. Um, you know, that's a big, that's a big difference, you yep. know? And it goes to show, okay, I mean, even in the primary home market stuff, what I'm doing is vacation properties are basically your those those buyers are basically buying half on emotion and half on investment reasons. They're renting it out while they're not here, but they're taking their family there in the summer. Yep. So it's a half and half deal. You could take somebody in a primary market and focus more on investor. You know, a residential investors who are buying fourplexes, duplexes, right. uh, multifamily, stuff like that, and really kind of live that same lifestyle, you know, rather than the very emotional first time home buyers, yep. primary home homeowners, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yep. Well, I know time is important. Um, if you got time, I got one little game I do. It's called Five on It. I'm going to ask you five questions. One is cold, five is hot, and just give me your rating, all right? Okay. You ready? Okay. Zillow. So, so uh, you're, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, hot or cold. You're saying one through five. Oh, one five through five, hot. and yep. five is hot. And just all right, I'll, I'll figure it out. Yep, Zillow. What part of it? Zillow leads. Zillow leads zero. All right, I like that answer. Exercise. Five sleep five the crimson tide roll tide <laughs> all right and then the last one they're is they're always on fire dude you know what their fo their football team wasn't that great this year but guess what yeah they their basketball team is on fire their basketball team is huh but yeah they're number four they they came in at their number four right now in the country who's the head coach there um, his name is, uh, 
Yeah, uh, that's on the tip of my I'm, tongue. I'm seeing new coaches. I'm seeing it, new new teams hit, and they're all these coaches that coached at these big places previously. So, but he's yeah, a, he's a good coach. He's been there for a second. I'll definitely look it up. up. The last one is New Year's resolutions. Nate Oates is his name. New Year's resolutions. Uh, I'm going to say five, but it depends on what they are, right. you know, because. If you're if you're going to say transactions, that's dangerous. It needs to be more like I'm going to make five new friends a day, yeah. um, rather than because you can't control how many transactions you're going to do, but you can yeah. control how many clients you add to a database every day. Um, that was a good. You know, I picked that it, up in your your uh, training that you just did um, on YouTube. That that it makes so much sense because we all look too far ahead when the answer yeah. to that far ahead is right in front of you. What's I mean, it's important today. to put it in place. Yeah. You know, it's important to actually have it, you know, that goal, like I'm going to do this many deals, Yeah, but it's very dangerous to put so much weight on it. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to give you, I'm going to let you go, but I want to say, I want everybody to follow Ricky Kroof on YouTube and Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, valuable information. If you're a real estate agent or not, he's got some good knowledge out there. So I appreciate your time very much. Hopefully we connect again some other time. Hey, enjoy it, brother. Hey, I need you to do an audio book for your book. An audio book for my book? Yeah, your book. Have you done an audio yet? Can we get yeah. on? You do? It's been on Audible from day one. Well, I didn't even know you wrote one until just the other day. So I'm going to listen to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually read the second one, List to Last. It's my voice. I did the voice. But yeah. the first one, I hired a guy to do it. Zero to Diamond. But yeah, they, they're both on Audible from day one. Well, I'm going to listen to the one that you did and uh yeah I'll, I'll report back all right do it up man all right bud thank you very much have a Thanks, good new bro. year and merry christmas likewise brother all right we'll see you see you man